Welcome to the Adventist Healthcare New Podcast. I'm Shanna and I'm joined with Nimit. Hello, everyone. Hi, Nimit. And what a timely episode today. We're going to be talking about mental health. And joining us today is Dr. Marissa Leslie. Hi, Shanna. Hi, Hi, Dr. Nimit. Leslie. Hi, Dr. Leslie. Dr. Leslie is the Adventist Healthcare System Medical Director of Psychiatry. She's a pediatric and adult psychiatrist. She's been with Adventist Healthcare for eight years. So thanks for joining us. Oh, it's my pleasure. Thanks for having me. I feel like everybody is talking about mental health these days. I know I think about mental health a lot, my own mental health a lot these days. So this will be a timely talk, especially as COVID numbers are seeming to not go in the right direction. I've um, lost track of which wave we're in right now. <laughs> that's yeah. true. You're absolutely right. It's very hard. The up and down is very hard to handle and keep up with. Well, part of me is glad that we're talking about mental health now a lot more because at least people are open about it and talking about it. So I'm very excited for this conversation. So we'll get right into it. So Dr. Leslie, why do you think people are talking about mental health so much more now than they used to? I think it's interesting because now we're forced to really talk about it. Before it was something we don't want to talk about or we want to call something else. But, you know, I always talk about mental health as something you want to maintain it's not just when you're really sick or if you have a severe illness, it's, it's something you want to promote. I think we have the younger generation to thank, quite honestly. Generation Z, Gen Alpha, and even millennials are very open about their struggles, their victories. Social media definitely helps with that. So I think that given the transparency of society nowadays via social media, it's just much less of a stigma. And and truly the younger generation just doesn't want to be judged for negative things anymore. They don't want people called out for things that are natural and pervasive, such as mental health. Just as they're so embracing of, of differences, I think that they are certainly more attuned to making sure we talk about things like mental health and that we don't ostracize people for quite honestly having very typical and normal experiences, but that in the past we may have ostracized. Well, that that's a... One of my next questions was, you know, the stigmas associated with mental health. And maybe that's one of them is people don't think that everybody struggles or that, you know, a lot of us struggle. No, quite honestly, everybody struggles with <laughs> yep. something. You know, if you've ever worried a little bit when you've been on a plane and experienced turbulence, that's part of mental health. But mental health is also positive. Mental health is how did you make it through a difficult experience? How did you handle the loss of a grandparent or the loss of a parent or the loss of a friend? All that is mental health. People erroneously just relegate mental health to the person on the street corner talking to themselves. And that person is very important to society and to me, mm -hmm. of course, but they never really personalize that mental health is how I feel before I take a test, you know, how I feel before I give a speech. All of that is mental health. And so I think one of the downsides of not thinking about mental health that way is when you're struggling with something even more serious, we've been less likely to seek help and then it gets really bad mm -hmm. and it may affect work, family, relationships because we haven't viewed mental health as something you have to maintain like your physical health. Yeah. Yeah. So over the past 18 months, you know, before mental health was, I think the stressors were very different. And over the 18 months, a lot of the stressors changed due to the COVID pandemic. Um, what are some of the things that you're seeing now or you've seen over the past few months that are different? And, and what are some of the things that they're struggling with uh, as a result of it? Well, I think one major stressor that COVID has introduced uniquely is the isolation. In the attempt to remain alive, we have really cut off our social lifelines or limited it or decreased it. And socialization is, is so important to healthy mental health. Now, for different people, if you're an introvert or you have social anxiety, the level of socialization may be different. But even people with social anxiety and even introverts have found that, whoa, I really do need to see people and interact. And I think in the beginning, people on the introvert spectrum of personality thought, this is great. <laughs> you know, I don't have to make small talk. I don't have yeah. to talk at the water mm -hmm. cooler. But um, different articles I've read have, have highlighted that even the introvert said, no, I need a little bit of it. I just don't need a whole lot of it that yeah. tends to occur in the workplace. But I, I do read, think the yeah, isolation. I also read articles where people have, you know, even when they see each other, they see each other with 
masks and they can't see their entire facial expression. I think that has created a lot of the uh, unconscious social isolation as well. So I think a lot of that is is very interesting how that's affecting us without us even knowing it. Right. I mean, there's that and there's also the hugging. Mm -hmm. People, they say you need four hugs a day. And if you don't live with other people, how many hugs are you even getting? Yeah. Right. Yeah. Um, I think I think another stressor is the unpredictability of this. It's a roller coaster. It's it is certainly been a roller, a roller coaster. coaster. And I mean, I think we're we're really escalating to the top about yeah. to go down a cliff again because last year we thought, OK, this is great. Vaccines are coming. And then we realize, whoa, it's not not everyone signing up for vaccines. And now we're in a place where you're vaccinated. You may have a booster and you may still get sick. You won't mm-hmm. die, according to science. But just the um you know, there's there's not a whole lot of assurance nowadays. There's not a whole lot of assurance that you may have to, I mean, you may have to stay home. I read too, you know, there's so much out of our control and that's hard for people sometimes to, to wrap their head around or, or, you know, just live in that sort of, we don't know what's going to happen next. That's true. That's true. And I, I know I'm talking about there not being a whole lot of assurance, but as a physician and as a scientist, there still is some degree mm-hmm. of assurance, you know, when it comes to the impact. So compared to March 2020, where we didn't know a whole lot at all. Is yeah. it is it in the air? Do I get it just from being two feet away from you? Yep. Now we know a whole lot more. Yeah. But Shannon, you're right. There there is this loss of control that many people have a hard time dealing with. But I, I think some of the people who are handling the loss of control better um, are certainly people who kind of have a, a worldview where nothing is really in your control and you just kind of do the best you can mm-hmm. with what you have. Now, children need predictability, but they follow our lead. Mm-hmm. So if it's kind of like, well, this week, let's see what we're doing. And OK, you can control the type of mask you choose. I think children are a little more flexible in that sense. All right, well, then maybe I'll choose a colorful mask. Yeah. But the adults kind of know some of the repercussions. Am I going to have my job? Um, you know, will I have to stay home and, and care for my child or school my child? That that was my fear last oh. year. <laughs> That's still my fear. <laughs> but I, I do think that the, the sense of loss of control has certainly led to a lot of adverse mental health yeah. experiences. So what are some of the things that people could do now to take care of their mental health? I know when we talk about health in general, you know, we say, okay, make sure you're having proper nutrition, proper diet, proper sleep, hygiene, workout. Um, and, and most of that is related to your physical health, but also affects your mental health. But what are some of the strategies or some things that people could do in terms of their mental health specifically? So what's really cool about mental health is all of the things you said, Nimit, <laughs> absolutely all of those and- Yes, absolutely. And and different things to help your mindset. Uh, there's a study that shows that if you list three good things every single day in a very short amount of time, I think maybe even after three days, you start to see that you have a more positive mindset. You don't feel as burned out or depleted because you're focusing on the good that's all around you. Mm-hmm. And even in our darkest moments, there are always silver linings and things we can list as good things in our life. But doing that intentionally undistracted at the end of the day, whenever the end of your day is, I don't know if you work night shift or day (laughs) shift, but at the end of the day can really promote good mental health. I think other things are the social aspect. Reach out intentionally. Nowadays, people can at least congregate, hopefully safely outside. But if you don't feel comfortable congregating, you can reach out, have a conversation. I think many of us are tired of the virtual thing, Mm -hmm. but if that's what you have, then that's what you have. But reaching out intentionally, I think is a positive aspect of the pandemic. I think that people are doing that more often now, being more intentional about reaching out to their loved ones or people they haven't talked to in a long time. Yeah, I haven't found myself, you know, being a mom and I, you, you've you experienced the same thing, Dr. Leslie, you're working full time and then with your kids being virtual, then you're also the teacher. <laughs> and so you're pulling all these duties and I found myself struggling and I don't normally talk about it with my husband very much or whatever, but I, I finally got him to a point. I was like, oh my gosh, I'm tired. You know, I'm just tired and I, I, I'm burnt out. 
And even just saying that to him, so he recognized where I was at because he was facing his own things too. And now we're much more open to talking about it. It just really took both of us kind of going, we need to take a moment, talk about how we're feeling so we can help each other. Absolutely. And that, that, yeah. that, I know that seems so simple, but for That's us, important. I mean, even after almost 20 years of marriage, this was a whole new phase, a whole new aspect of our partnership that we had never dealt with before. So this was all new for us. And it's it's extraordinary, mm -hmm. right? And that we had to do several of these things. We had to drive our children to school or our loved ones, our parents. Uh, we had to do all these things, but now it's kind of on steroids mm -hmm. because I know at my daughter's school, there's no more before care. So any meeting I have at work, either I'm balancing with my husband who's taking her in the morning or I'm having the meeting in the car mm -hmm. on the way to work. It's, it's definitely a whole new normal, and a lot of this is not normal. And yeah. I think what you did is, is really powerful, Shanna, in that you named it, you vocalized it, you became aware of the balance mm -hmm. that you need and how it was affecting you. And I, I'll say in our home, we just had to create the balance. You know, you don't have to sign your child up for every single thing. Yeah. And COVID helped us with that because we were so concerned about her becoming ill anyway that we had to dial it way back. And I, I heard, I read this really cool quote on my cousin's Instagram page, but it says, if you don't want to be burned out, stop living life like you're on fire. <laughs> Isn't that great? <laughs> I, I that like that. So yep. Yep. And we're not so on simple. fire, right? Yep. We're not yeah. on fire. Yep. I think a lot of the obligations we put on ourselves, we have to reevaluate. Is that really important? Mm -hmm. And for children, especially, you know, that's my specialty. It's important to just let them play. They don't have to have every minute of the day scheduled. And guess what? Adults don't have to have every minute of the day scheduled either. We can yeah. actually take those walks and just listen to nothingness and not worry so much about the next thing on our platter or the next thing in our schedule. Yeah. Well, I'm, I'm doing a quick little time check here. We're coming up on time. But Dr. Leslie, I want to have you back to do some more follow-up. I think this is such an important topic and I want to get to everything. And I know some questions our listeners might have so we can dig even more deeply into this topic. So I think we have a couple really key things though right now, which is to talk about it, be aware that it's just as important as your physical health. Um, Nimit, do you have any final thoughts before we wrap this episode no, and come back for another one? I think this is a much needed discussion because okay. people will benefit so much from it. Yeah. Um, so we'll love to have you back, Dr. Leslie. Yeah. Thank you. Thank you. All right. Well, thank you, everybody. We're going to come back with a follow-up episode on our mental health topic. But don't forget to follow us wherever you get your podcast. And you can also find anything about Adventist Healthcare at AdventistHealthcare.com. So stay tuned for the follow-up episode on mental health. Thanks for listening. 